Hi, good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello, good evening. Good evening. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Okay, okay, good, good. Hi, good uh, evening. Hi, good evening, Rosemary. I just want to know if the audio um uh, of uh, here in the video conference is okay. You hear me um in a good way. So I don't know if there is any distortions. That, that that's what I want to know. Is it okay? It's okay. It's okay. Okay, good, wonderful. Okay, guys. Um, <laughs> well, today we're going to um continue. Uh, with the topic that we're discussing yesterday, if you remember yesterday, we're um, discussing a little bit uh, how to construct sentences in a uh, simple pass. Okay, that, that was the aim yesterday. And also, we did some comparison, uh, I mean, contrast. Uh, we contrast some uh, things yesterday using past, present, and future, if you remember, right? And also, we're uh, using time expressions in order to construct those. Uh, sentences. Okay, um, now, because we have seen already uh, how to use simple past, we are going to move on and we're going to see how we work um, in simple present. But we're going to do something, okay? We're going to work in an activity uh, and I will share to you a link where you're going to see some sentences. There are some activities that you have to complete for this uh, for this topic, okay. Just let me let me show you here. I'll share the link here in in chat box. Just give me one minute. Okay, I'm going to share this part. This is a game uh, from Game Store English. So um, we're going to be working on with this before going through on the topic. We're going to see how we use uh, simple present words. And uh, basically what you have to do here is uh, play a, 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 an online game, okay? I'm sharing right now the link here in the chat box, so you can go there to, and work on this web page. Once you have finished this activity, you need to share your score, uh, the ones that you're gonna receive at the end of this exercise, and also you have to uh, send in a screenshot. Um, using the WhatsApp group that we, that what we have, the ones that we have for English Corporativo there, right? So is it clear what we're going to do? Is it clear what we are going to do? Yes, teacher. Yes. Oh, okay, good. Okay, well, um, go ahead then and, and complete this exercise. You're going to have guess it's going to be okay if I give you five, I mean six minutes. I think six minutes is okay. So go ahead and complete this exercise. Teacher, tiene el, el micrófono apagado. Ok, thank you. Uh, good, okay, evening, teacher. <laughs> good evening, Oscar. I was just uh, okay, greeting you. Uh, good evening. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Fine. Ok, Oscar, I just saw that you have already joined some minutes ago. 
Um, what we're going to do is just work in simple present. This, this activity, um, you're going to have there to, in the chat box. I'm going to share again, okay? Just take a look of this exercise. You have to complete this exercise once you have done. Um, you need to take a screenshot uh, to the score that you're going to receive at the end and send that screenshot to the WhatsApp group. And Victoria, I saw you um, had your hand raised. So do you want to say something, Victoria? Yes, yeah, sorry, teacher, but I'm connecting right now to the class. So I don't know how what I what I'm going to do. What I'm going oh. to do. Okay, okay, Victoria, don't worry. I, I will explain you. Um, I have already shared a link. I don't know if you can see the link in the chat box here in the in, in the video conference. Okay, thank you, teacher. Okay, well, uh, what you have to do there to, is to complete the exercise that you are seeing in your screen. This is about simple present tense. And um, once you have done, when, once you have completed this exercise, you need to take an screenshot to the score that you're going to receive at the end, okay? So once uh, you send that screenshot um, uh, to the, well, once you finish, you have to send the screenshot to the, What's a group? The ones that we have from English Corporative, okay? That's all.
you complete the exercise um, or you need more time in order to complete it? Need more time, please. You need more time, okay. Okay, okay.
Okay, good. Um, I'm just checking in here um, the screenshots that some of you have already shared. Um, there are just five in here in the big conference. We are uh, 12 guests at least. Half of it mustn't uh, the, the activity I have that everybody's working on it. Okay. Um, guys, what we're going to do, okay, Alicia, thank you for sharing in the screenshot too. Okay. Um, okay, guys, uh, we're going to move to the next part that is uh, explaining how uh, we construct sentences using simple present. Um, now, as you remember, this is an easy topic because you have seen uh, this topic before. Just let me stop this and short the whiteboard, okay? Um, okay, here we have. Um, guys, um, we we'll talk about simple present uh, as in simple past, right? Uh, we're gonna uh, we're going to um, two, two different kind of sentences: the ones that we use with be, and the other ones that we use regular verbs. Okay, so um, we're gonna add here the simple present tense. This is gonna be we're going to review this this topic so quickly because. There is not hell to say it's more information that you already already have. Um, as you know, in simple present, right, we have um, affirmative sentences. Affirmative sentence. We also have, I mean, um, negative sentences. And the last one, interrogative sentence. Okay, these are like um, three forms that we want to be using for um, constructing sentences in simple present tense. Um, there we have, right, a affirmative sentence. We also know that in this case, when you use uh, an affirmative sentence, we have to use um, the subject plus verb and plus um, the complement, right? So I um, want to add here, maybe different color, I guess, it's gonna be so much better. Um, the three elements that we have to include. Subject plus verb. The verb must be in base form, okay? The verb plus the complement, right? Uh, any of you, um, well, a volunteer uh, wants to share a uh, um, or think in a, um, an affirmative sentence using simple present and write it down here in the chat box, okay? One of you can please just share an example there that we're going to um, copy and paste that information. Um, let me go move on to the... For negative, we're going to be using subject plus the a uh, do or does. So this is going to be the auxiliary word, right? Plus not, this is an adverb because it allows us to change the meaning of the word uh, in this case. Uh, we're going to use base form of the bird, classic complement. That's a lot of uh, elements here, but you know, this is so easy uh, to construct. And the last one is going to be interrogative sentences. You know, we have to do a switch here. How do you do or does? It's going to depend on the subject plus subject plus complement. But also we have to include a question mark at the end because it's mandatory for this kind of uh, sentences, okay? So there we have um, affirmative, negative, interrogative. Um, 
Um, okay, I, I seen, I'm checking here the, the chat box, but I, I, I'm now seeing the examples. Can you please provide me one example using affirmative sentence, negative sentence, and interrogative sentence? You decide which one you want to construct. What I, I, what I want is just to um, take an example from the chat box, okay? Write a, a simple present tense using affirmative or negative or interrogative sentence, just one. Okay, thank you, Carla. You have the first one. She has 20 cards. Good. Just uh, remember that at the end we have this period and also um, capital letters, okay? So we have, this is going to be the example number one. I use this color, okay? She has 20 cats. Um, Lily doesn't like to cook. We're going to take this one too. Okay, and the last one, I, I need, oh, Alicia, I, I'm going to take your um, example. Does she run in the park? Good. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you so much for sharing those um, examples there. Uh, guys, okay, here we have what basically um, the, the, the form, I mean, or the structure, uh, how to form a simple present tense, okay? Affirmative, negative, and interrogative sentence. So um, if you notice there, um, each example has the uh, all the elements that correspond for each form. Case of affirmative sentences, the only thing that probably will have to mention there is that, um, because it is not explained there, is that uh, we're gonna use a different word for, uh, in this case, the subjects or, uh, I mean, the pronouns that are uh, used for the person. Uh, when I refer to those, uh, I mean, she, he, and it. Okay, if we use he, she, and it, we're gonna use the word in um, the person. So what does it mean? We have to include an S at the end of the word. And we have to respect the spelling rules. For instance, um, eh, remember that there are some words that we have to add ES at the end. So that's going to depend uh, on the word. Eh, there are some words that are irregular, like the, the ones that we have here. Okay, that's the case of the word have, because in uh, third person, a uh, third person word, for have is has, so that's mean that we're going to change the structure. Uh, the same happened with the verb to be. If we're going to use um, third person, we're going to use is instead of be. And also, um, the verb uh, to be have different um, options in order to conjugate it with each uh, pronoun, things like that, right? So probably you know, you already know this information. In the case of negative sentences, um, something that I have to mention and I have to highlight for this case is that if we're gonna use um, the auxiliary verb for third person, we are going to use does instead of do, because it has the same rules that uh, the ones that we have for a third person uh, subjects, right? So if we use he, she, or it, or um, singular noun, we're gonna use does. And I uh, have also, um, well, we have also take into consideration that the verb must be, and just, uh, I'm going to, to repeat that, that again, because it's mandatory. Uh, we must use the base form of the verb after the auxiliary, and then in this case is do uh, or does, okay? After a, after uh, not, right? So um, also you can do, you can play with contractions there. You can use don't or doesn't. So it, it's up to you. Um, then we have also uh, 
the interrogative sentences. In this case, the only thing that changed here is that, uh, oh, my apologies, I, I have a mistake here because uh, we haven't included the, the verb, right? Okay, we must include the verb. The verb is missing. Verb plus complement. Okay, like this. Okay, there we have. So uh, the only thing that is going to change from um, th this sentence is that we're going to use the auxiliary verb at the beginning, no, no after the subject. Because uh, when we create sentences yeah, for interrogative, interrogative form, we must do that, right? And at the end, it's mandatory to include the question mark. Otherwise, uh, our sentence will have a different meaning or uh, we can ask the idea if we don't use the question mark at the end in the sentence, it's mostly writing uh, something for someone, right? So um, there you have the examples. In, in affirmative, she has 20 cats. In negative, in negative, Lily doesn't like to cook, okay? And in the interrogative sentence, does she run in the park? So there you have the three examples, right? Do you have any question about this topic? Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. It's clear, right? Because uh, we already know that uh, information probably, and, and this is something uh, that you have been discussing previously in some models uh, that you have taken here in English Corporativo, okay? So now we're going to move to um, Simple Future. Okay, just let me clear all these drawings. Do you want to, if you want, you can take an screenshot there and send it to the WhatsApp group. Uh, later on, you're going to need this information in order to uh, solve some other exercises, okay? Take an screenshot. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Ready. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Perfect. Just let me clear all drawings here. Good. Now we're going to see simple future. Um, this is an easy topic. Um, because it, basically the only thing that we're going to do here is just to add the um, auxiliary word will is going to transform our word into a, a future word. Okay, let me just put it down here. When I add affirmative sentence, um, when I have negative two. in the interrogative sentence. Good. Then we have three different forms for simple future. Um, in the case of affirmative sentence, the structure is going to be as follow. Um, in affirmative sentence, we're going to use a subject, as always, right? In all sentence, we must include a subject plus the auxiliary verb is going to be will plus the base form of the verb plus a complement like this okay this is going to be or structure same happen or negative tell me teacher e the verb is in base form Yes, in the case of a simple future, the verb is going to be in base form. That's going to happen always for affirmative sentence simple future. So for instance, when, when I say, I will play basketball. So I'm, I'm just informing that I'm going to do something, but in the future, I will play it. Okay, and uh, the verb must be in base form, okay? Okay. Good. Um, as I said before, right, the only thing that we're going to include here is just will uh, for each sentence. We wanna, we wanna check this later. 
Um, for negative sentence, we are going to use the same structure like this. Subject as will write, and we're going to include the adverb not. Class bird is form, okay, and a complement. Okay, there we have. So subject will not plus, uh, will not yes, plus verb plus a complement. Last thing here, um, in case of interrogative sentence, this is going to be will plus subject plus verb plus complement plus question mark. Okay, there you have. These are like uh, the three structures for, for simple future. In the case of simple future, is going to be so it's because the only thing that we're going to include here is um, the, the auxiliary verb, will, right? Uh, in order to transmit or, or share information that, about something that is going to happen in the near future, okay? Um, I have to tell you something related to um, the simple future tense because there is a different for in order to express a future. I, I don't know if you have heard about that. Have you ever heard, um, heard I mean, uh, about the other form in order to express an idea in future? Going to? Yes, going to. That's what I'm referring to. Yes, good, thank you so much. And do you know the difference between using a going to versus will? Do you know the difference? about using will and going to? Maybe it's because uh, will is a probably, um, probability, I'm sorry. Yes, that's, that's correct. Okay, that's the answer there. Um, basically, uh, that's what we're going to, give me just one moment. I need just to um, check something. Okay, okay, my apologies. I was just answering uh, some of your class because uh, it's not attending today. Okay, guys, um, yes, basically that, right? Uh, going to versus will, to, uh, it's going to uh, uh, be easy in certainty, right? Because um, if we're gonna use um, going to, it's because um, there is something in the future that is about to, to happen. So there is something that it is like, uh, like uh, as you said, there is more probability in order to happen. In case of will, it's like a promise, like uh, something that probably is going to happen and the, the level of certainty is gonna be lower than using going to. Because if you use going to, that's mean that you're going to, uh, that, that's mean that you're going to use it well in, what, probably 10 minutes tomorrow, okay, next week. But uh, if we're gonna use, um, if we're gonna use a different, uh, well, the same idea, the same uh, sentence, and you use uh, like uh, will, the idea or, or what we are going to understand if you use will is that uh, that probably is not going to happen. Probably yes, but probably not the level of certainty is going to be different than using will. You say, I'm going to visit my mother. Okay, probably you're going to do that because you're using going to, because you have decided already that what uh, you're going to do. But if you say, it, I will visit my parents. Um, so um, we don't have the idea, probably it's going to happen or not. So I, I don't know if, if you're getting the idea. Yes, no? Yes. 
Yeah, if you want, I can switch to Spanish in order to explain this, this thing. Um, in, in el caso del este, will you going to, en el caso de will, este, cuando nosotros eh, lo utilizamos en una este, oración, hay eh, cierto grado de incerteza de que eh, algo pueda ocurrir o no. Um, hay una diferencia entre el going to y el will y, y, y este, se basa en eso. Si nosotros utilizamos will, este, estamos utilizándolo con este, eh, o expresando una idea que muy probablemente tiene mayor incerteza que utilizar el going to. El going to es para cosas que nosotros ya hemos decidido hacer, que nosotros pues eh, tenemos un cierto grado de, de seguridad de que va a ocurrir. Eh, y, y ponía el ejemplo de este, iré a visitar a, eh, a, a mis padres, ¿sí? Si yo utilizo en español, y esto sucede también en español, si yo utilizo, yo voy a ir a visitar a mis padres, si yo utilizo esa expresión, yo voy a ir a visitar a mis padres, yo le estoy diciendo a usted que esa decisión yo ya la he tomado y muy probablemente va a suceder, ¿sí? Pero si yo utilizo la oración y digo, iré a visitar a mis padres, hay un mayor grado de incerteza, ¿sí? Eh, es una decisión que todavía no me la he pensado. Eh, es algo que este, muy probablemente sí ocurra, pero muy probablemente no ocurra, ¿sí? Es como eh, algo que no se ha decidido aún. Ahora, si utilizamos el, el, el going to este, y el will, tiene... Eh, a, una similitud, bueno, por no decir que es eh, lo mismo, eh, a la hora de expresar las ideas. Si yo utilizo el will, el nivel de incerteza es mayor que utilizar el going to. Esa es la única diferencia entre el, entre el will y el going to. Sin embargo, ambas se utilizan para expresar acciones que van a ocurrir en el futuro. Sí, ya sean que ocurran de forma inmediata o a largo plazo. Pero... Eh, definiendo un poco los niveles o grados de este, incerteza, ¿sí? Porque ambas, y, y, y como estamos hablando del futuro, eh, en, en las oraciones, ambas pueden suceder o no, ¿sí? Eso va a depender cómo se vayan dando las cosas y dependiendo de lo que usted haya este, eh, expresado en su oración, ¿sí? ¿Estamos claros con eso? Yes. Ok, ahora las estructuras. Vemos las estructuras. Tenemos los affirmative sentences. Eh, en el caso de los affirmative sentences, we're going to be using subject plus will plus verb plus complement. In the case of the negative sentence, it's going to be the same, but we usually, uh, we eh, do a, a construction there with will not, because instead of will not, we're going to be using won't. Have you ever listened to that word before? Like this one? Yes. Yes. Yes, right? Won't. It's like will not. The structure is going to be the same, like subject plus won't plus word plus a complement. In the case of interrogative sentences, uh, there you're going to have for just not questions, um, the use of will at the beginning. So we just do a switch there uh, with will plus the subject, right? So instead of using subject at the beginning, we're going to be, use, we're going to be using will. And, and also we're going to keep uh, the verb in the base form. And uh, we have to include a complement if we want. What is mandatory is to use the question mark at the end. Uh, just take a look here, because in the case of simple future, in uh, each form, we're going to be using the verb in, in the base form, okay? Verb in base form, verb in base form, and also the last one, too, in base form, okay? Um, this is how we construct sentences. Can you think an example using affirmative, negative, and interrogative? Uh, please just share your answer there in the chat box, okay? Because we're going to do this activity in order to see if we can express ideas using these three forms, okay? Uh, one sentence using affirmative, one sentence using negative, and one sentence using interrogative. Go ahead and share your answers.
Okay, Erica already shared um, the affirmative sentence. I will learn another language. Good, We're, I'm going to copy and paste this just to give you some examples. So basically, these are yours examples. Um, let me use this color or this one. It's going to be so much better. Purple is better. Um, give me one example in negative. I won't be sad next month because it's going to be my. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to take this one too. Okay, Art, there you have. And the last one, right? Um, let's see. I need a sentence using interrogative form. Can you please share one using interrogative form? Okay, good. Well, Cinderella, 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 go to dance. Will Cinderella go to the dance? Okay, good. Let me copy and paste this, and it's part. Okay, good. There you have. These, these are like the three examples that I've taken from yours. Um, um, also using affirmative sentence, negative and interrogative. Do you see any problem here with these sentences? Probably I'm not seeing something. Are these sentences okay? Yes, no. Miley, for instance, okay. um, at the point where in the second and the negative oh, second. Mm -hmm. Okay, just, just period at the end, right? Period. Okay. I guess all sentences are, are good, right? There is no... Okay, <laughs> tell me. In Cinderella, is, will Cinderella go to the dance? Or sería go to things okay so that that's going to depend what referring to because if we are using the noun is it correct but if we use it as a verb eh, so we must use tense aquí este depende eh, um como lo estemos utilizando si estamos utilizando tense como nombre necesitamos agregar el artículo de Eh, porque vamos a, 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 a referirnos al baile, ¿ok? ¿Irá Cinderella al baile? Eh, eh, mm -hmm. Gramaticalente estaría bien, ¿verdad? Pero mm -hmm. este, si nosotros lo tomamos como verbo, entonces sí tendría que cambiar. Tendríamos que quitarle el de y decir a bailar. Mm -hmm. Ok, thank you. Sí. Ok. Uh, what well, we have taken a screenshot there because and send it to to the WhatsApp group because probably we're going to as I said before right we're going to be using this information later. Uh, take a screenshot there and share it, uh, this in the WhatsApp group. Okay, um, we're going to move on to the next part in in the platform of the corporativo. Just let me stop the sharing. Um, now, okay. Let me just show you my screen again. Okay, good. Here we have. Okay, um, I don't know if you check this information. It, this is new here in the in the platform. It says uh, this course finished in six days. So uh, probably 
Let me just see here. One, two, three, four. Um, no, it's no six days. Um, just let me explain you this. It is not going to finish in six days. It's going to finish in about three days, okay? So uh, we don't have six days in order to finish. We must complete the, the, the courses. Uh, what I mean is like um, the exercises uh, here in the platform um, before Friday, okay? You must have at least 80%, if not 100%, right? But you need at least 80% in order to request later to your diploma. That's mandatory if you want to go to the next model, module three, I guess, English Intermedio, Modulo Tres. So um, th this is just an information we're going to find there in the platform. Uh, let me move on to the section number four that we're going to have uh, some exercises uh, that we had to complete, but um, this is about something, this, this is something that you must, you probably have already complete, right? We're going to move to the lesson up yet. And um, let me see here. Okay, it says in this class, you will notice and practice intonation and statements beginning with a time phrase. Also, at the end of the class, you will have time to practice and personalize phrases using different tenses. Um, okay, let's see what is this about. Uh, let me show this video to you and then we're gonna be practicing. Okay, pay attention, please. Ready to work on pronunciation? Notice the intonation in these statements beginning with a time phrase. Pronunciation. Intonation in statements with time phrases. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice the intonation in these statements beginning with a time phrase. In the past, very few people used computers. Today, people use computers all the time. In the future, there will be a computer in every home. Can you now complete these statements with your own information? Read the statements to your teacher. As a child, I used to Two years ago, I, in five years, I. Okay, there you have. So this is what we're going to do. I want you to complete um, these statements um, in, well, in this case, you, you're gonna use your personal information if you want. Uh, number one, it says, as a, as a child, I used to, you're gonna say something. Two years ago, I, you're gonna say something to you, and in five years, I, you're gonna say something that you're going to do, okay? So uh, let's start with, um, I'm gonna check the list here. Who is the number one here? Alessandra, are you there? Alessandra? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Uh, complete these statements. Um, use each time expression in order to complete each one, okay? As a child, I used two, two years ago, I, and in five years, I, okay? Go ahead. Um, as a child, I used to watch uh, TV. Two years ago, I was in my first uh, senior year. And in five years, I am going to graduate from my university. Good, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, uh, let's see now to um, Alicia Escobar. Hi. Hi, good evening. Um, as a child, I used to play soccer in the street. Two years ago, I... Um, work in my first job in a few years i travel to some place okay good wonderful um let's see now to brian brian 
Are you there? No. Maximiliano, are you there, sir? I mean, Maximiliano, oh, my apologies. It's Maximo. Yes, <laughs> Maximo, my apologies. I changed your name. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Maximo. As a child, I used to drink milk. Okay. Two years ago, I didn't study English. In five years, I will have a new car. Okay, wonderful. Uh, let's listen now to Miguel, Miguel Angel. I used to short and arrive at my home. And three years ago, uh, I Uh, we, I, uh, everything will be alright. Uh, mm -hmm. Ahead with, uh, I guess we didn't listen the last sentence in five years. Okay, but don't, don't worry. Um, uh, Juan, Juan Cruz. As a child, I used to tricycle. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, I used a motorcycle. And in five years, I will use a car. Okay, good, good, thank you for sharing that with us. And the last one, you can have to be the last one, Victoria. Victoria? Are you there? Victoria, can you hear me? Hello. Okay, I guess she's not here. Uh, let's listen to Rosemary. Rosemary. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, guys, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, teacher. Yes. yes. Okay, good, good. Okay, thank you. I, I think they are not here. Uh, Zelina, can you help us? This is going to be the last participation. Okay. Um, as a child, I used to climb trees. Two years ago, I had my daughter. In five years, I will get a good job. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And uh, guys, this is the end of this class because as you know, it's, it is eight uh, with 50, um, I mean, yes, 58 uh, minutes, okay, minutes. Uh, I'm going to stop this and um, I have to ask you, okay, uh, do you already complete all the exercises or there is something that you need to that, that you need help uh, in order to go to um, answer it, the exercises? You already complete all the exercises? Yes. 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 Good, good. Thumbs up if you have complete all the exercises, just to see how many of you have already complete the those, okay? Um, well, if you have already completed, I think that's nothing else that we have to there in the platform and um, guys uh, for tomorrow um, as you see the, the message there in 
in the group, we're not going to have classes. We're going to uh, take classes this coming Thursday and also Friday instead of Wednesday, okay? The, those classes are going to be, or last class in this case, in the class we're going to have on Thursday is gonna be the last one. And then on Friday, we're going to see the last topic. And also we're going to have a review about the final test, okay? And that's all. Then you can request then your diploma and move on to the next model, okay? So um, do you have any question before leaving? No, teacher. No, okay, good. So, okay, good. So um, see you on Thursday and have a nice night. Blessings to all of you. Bye-bye. Okay, see you, teacher. Bye-bye. Good night.